We've got Jilly Flaherty with us after a lovely training session. We enjoyed watching that, but first of all, a huge congratulations because you are the all-time appearance maker now in the WSL. How does it feel to be a part of the history books and have made that at the weekend? Yeah, it's a bit of a surreal, to be fair, and probably something that, you know, you just sort of take for granted, probably, um, in the sense of it's just a, another number. Um, but it's something that, obviously... I've been driving for and um, yeah, it's a huge honour for obviously for me to become that player um, that's leading it at the moment and I know the, the pack below me is going to carry on chasing so I've got to try and rack it up a bit more. Well, you've overtaken Jill Scott now and you know what's happened to her. She's ended up in the jungle. So is that, <laughs> just telling is to that give me a call day one. You're going to see yourself next. I've got my phone now because I have got a list here of, of all your of all your achievements and you put on Instagram a nice caption yesterday with most appearances at WSL now, one UEFA Women's Cup, seven FA Women's Cup four WSL titles, the list goes on. Have you got any moment in your career you can really look back on as the highlight? Um, I'd say all of it. Like It's, it's hard to pinpoint um, like one specific moment. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I've been fortunate enough to be part of very good teams that um, I've, I've won a lot of titles with. Um, but yeah, I think for, obviously for me yesterday, it was just a bit of a reflection moment. Um, and I think as a player, first and foremost, I'm probably someone who will put myself down before I pat myself on the back. Um, and it's something, again, I think that once I do retire, it'll be something that I look back on and, and really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, hopefully there's still a few more achievements to hit on the on the journey. Yeah, I suppose when you're in it, it's quite difficult to reflect on all of those things, but it's nice, I guess, a moment for you to step back and reflect. Let's chat a bit about how it's been since joining Liverpool. You came in the summer. How's it been to be reunited with Matt Beard as a manager? Yeah, no, it's been really good. Obviously, I come here, um, knowing obviously I'd be linking back up with Beardy um, and obviously a couple of players that I played with before and... Yeah, it's just nice. I mean, the girls have helped me settle in really well. Um, the, the city's been kind to me as well. I found it's got a bit easier living up here too. Um, <laughs> not now the cold weather started, though, to be fair. Um, but no, it's been good. I mean, we obviously had a great start against Chelsea and then we've obviously played some tough games afterwards. But I think obviously Sunday was a huge point for us um, to add. And obviously we know we've got a big couple of games now leading into the Christmas break. So, yeah, we're, everyone's good. Everyone's well we're enjoying it and um, staying focused. It's a big adjustment for you though, isn't it? Leaving on a personal level, leaving London. So how has that adjustment been for you? And does that make it a little bit more difficult to settle in in a footballing sense? Yeah, it's been difficult at times. I'm not going to lie. It's hard when you're so used to being around your family um, to then come and, and be at least four, four and a half hours away from them. Um, but I feel like I'm at a point in my career where I'm glad I've done it now at the older age um, where I can obviously... I think handle it a bit better um, and my family have been great they've been up we've been down on international breaks um, Billy's been great as well giving me a couple of days extra just to be with them um, but it has been difficult and obviously I think I'm the first obviously to say about social media and things that have been said on there um, about me too which has made things even difficult um, I think settling in but the girls have been great the club's been great and hopefully it continues yeah, because it is difficult, isn't it, to block out things that people are saying. And I think people look at footballers and they think they're people that won't be got at and you don't read anything. But you're only human and you're going to read things. And how, I guess, you respond and are the teammates and the manager a big part of helping you through difficult times like that? Yeah, and I think it's difficult. I think, listen, I'm the first to say if I've had a bad game or a bad performance, I'm the first to criticise myself. And people are warranted to do that, you know. It's, we play a game of football, which is a game of opinions. And people are going to think I played well. People are going to think I played rubbish. That's just football. But... I think when people become a bit personal and are targeting me before I've even kicked a ball, I think that's it's unjustified and I think it's unfair and it, it does affect you. You know, obviously we are only humans. I go home, my family, my friends read it. Yeah. Um, I've come off of it, obviously, so I don't see it, but they still see it and obviously it still affects them. But like I said, I'm open. The club obviously really reached out to a few fans and said, come and meet us, you know, come and... I'm happy to have a chat with you if yeah. there's if there's a, a problem there or well, then to see how hard you're working. Exactly, but we've um out. we've got a great team here and a couple of girls obviously have got around me today and just said like obviously they appreciate me, they appreciate the work I'm doing for the team and like I said, whilst I'm here and I'm wearing the badge, I'll give everything 110 percent every game. Absolutely. Let's reflect on a couple of the games. Can I take you back to the, the first day of the season against Chelsea? That must have been a really proud moment as a team to come out and announce yourself in the WSL like that. Yeah, it was a huge result. Um I think even even I think if it was a one nil loss, for example, we still would have been proud because I think defensively as a team we played really well. Um I think there was probably a few people in the league who expected us to roll over and it to be a high score line because it's Chelsea. Um, but for us to come away from there with, with the win um, in the fashion we did it as well, um, yeah, it was a huge, it was a huge opener to us to the WSL. Um, and we found it obviously difficult afterwards, but 
I think that game gave us a lot of confidence as well. Yeah, you mentioned that difficult period there. What are you all saying to each other in training and how do you pick each other up after difficult results and difficult periods? Because sometimes things haven't quite gone your way, but you, you must still feel like you've been in every game and that's, that's what you want to do. That was your aim at the start of the season. Yeah, I think that's the main thing is that no games have been where we've just laid out, laid on the floor and been turned over. Like None of them have been like that. Like We've played well against Arsenal. We've played well against City, you know, the, the, the top teams in the league, and we've given games. And we should have, like, for example, City, we should have come away with a draw. Like, and I think City would have felt the same way as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think we've just got to keep, keep confidence with it and just keep pushing. You know, it's, it's difficult. It's a difficult league to be in, obviously. Every year, I say, it gets harder and harder. Um, so, for some times, a club to come up for the championship and obviously then to beat the champions on the opening day, sometimes there's expectations from people that we should be going and getting the Champions League spots in our first year. Like, yeah. I think there has to be that realism as well. And first and foremost, we want to we want to stay in the league and not just stay in it, but we want to make a statement as well. And I feel like the confidence is growing game by game. We know it, we just got to stick with it. Yeah, but the Brighton game was exciting. I mean, it was exciting for us, Missy Bell earlier. It was like, yeah, it's a bit more stressful when you're on the pitch. Did you enjoy getting that that late equaliser? Yeah, I loved it. I said, like, those are the sort of games I love, though, where it's pouring down the rain, you can do slide <laughs> tackles. Um, I said I could have stayed out there for another half hour of playing. Like, and I think if we'd have played maybe 10 minutes more, I think we would have gone on to win it. Um, but, yeah, it weren't... Obviously, we had a great start scoring early. Um, and, unfortunately, obviously, going in at 3-1 at half-time, you, like Beardy said, you either sink or you swim. Um, and for us, it was a great reaction. Technically, you kept a clean sheet in the second half and we went out there um, and we took our chances. And I think there's been a lot of talk about us not scoring from open play and things like that. So I think that helps take a bit of pressure off it too. But it was a great comeback. And like I said, in the changing room afterwards, you might not realise how massive that point is until the end of the season. But yeah. it's a tough place to go to Brighton and credit for us to come away with a point. Yeah, back at Prenton Park now, you've got a few home games before the Christmas break. The crowds keep breaking records and how much does that spare you on when you know you've got all these, a lot of young people as well in the, in the stands watching you and helping you along the way? Yeah, the crowd are huge. You know, even on, on Sunday, the fans were incredible. Like, we could hear them singing and driving us on to the last minute. And I think even then when the, the equaliser went in, I remember celebrating and turning around and looking at them and they're just all, like, jumping up <laughs> and down. Like, the place they all was... got on a bus very early yeah. to come watch you, yeah. <laughs> The place was rocking. Yeah, exactly. For them to get up, I think, about like R5 or something that they was coming down, like, we appreciate it so much. And... I don't think fans necessarily realise how important they are to teams, especially becoming that 12th player um, and driving them on. So, yeah, the next few games, obviously, we're at home, we're back in front of our fans and we need them more than ever to drive us on. And a game against West Ham, obviously, you were captain there. How will that feel coming up against your former team? Yeah, I mean, it'd be, it'd be nice to see the girls. Um, obviously, we've seen them in pre-season and obviously beat them quite substantially. <laughs> so, I know there are uh, a couple of them uh, give me a bit of stick about that. But, yeah, no, it'd be nice to see them. Obviously, I had a great four years at West Ham. I left on good terms as well. Um, but obviously for now I'm a Liverpool player and I want us to go out there and I want us to beat them and get the three points. Yeah, and finally, you, met, you mentioned earlier about the standard of the WSL and every year you notice it getting more and more. Do you notice that with the support and the attention around the women's game as well and how is it to be a part of that growth and to see it so firsthand? Yeah, no, I, was, I was talking about my first game in the WSL today and just the difference in the quality of the players, the quality of the standard of the football, um, but also the exposure, like Sky Sports, BBC, like... Um, I think back then it was on like Satanta Sports, the game, and I think they only had like seven games a season that yeah. were shown. Um, so yeah, for that exposure, the crowds, they're, they're growing each game. Obviously, you see it on the weekend with the games at the men's stadiums, the fans that turned out, the numbers, like, it's huge. And obviously, it's exciting the way the women's game's growing and, and long may it continue. And you're part of that history now, so huge congratulations. Thank you Thanks very so much. Thanks so much for chatting to us. Thank, Thank you. you.